Well, that big voting controversy in Sandoval County is getting even more complicated, and now we're waiting to find out if state police will impound all the ballots there. And at the same time, we're also hearing from a lot of people who are not happy about all this. If you have any sense of honor, you would resign immediately and take your staff with you. Was this election a fair and honest election? No. 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 Obviously, they're not too happy, and that's just a taste of what voters told Sandoval's county commissioners and election workers last night at this meeting. Upset they got stuck in very long lines on election day. And this is what the county clerk, Sally Padilla, told us about it. On the presidential election, there will always be long lines. If people do not take advantage of the early voting and the absentee that's been made easier for them now, then there will always be long lines. A lot of other people disagree with that. Now, Padilla is a Democrat. Some Republicans think that she helped create these long lines on purpose. So now they've gone to court to get a judge to order some ballot boxes be reopened. They've even tried to have the state police impound all the ballots. They have to do that. Well, first they have to pay $2,000 for that to happen. Elizabeth. Albuquerque is about to lose dozens of high paying jobs. GE says they plan to shut down a plant and move their jobs to Alabama. The company's Intelligent Platforms Division will close about a year from now. The plant sits near Paseo and Edith in the North Valley. 70 high-paying manufacturing and engineering jobs are going goodbye. These jobs have to do with building embedded computers for things like fighter jets and Humvees. This particular closure looks like it's related to defense uh, cuts or anticipated cuts in defense spending. Uh, it is directly affecting contractors. This is the second time GE has slammed the Albuquerque. A few years ago, they closed their longtime jet engine plant in the South Valley. But there is some good job news to report to you this morning. A new home furnishing and appliance store is looking to hire about 45 people. Texas-based Cons Home Plus took over the Old Builders Square store on Hotel Circle near Eubank and I-40. The chain plans to open another store next year on Albuquerque's west side and in Las Cruces. Well, today we could find out what the FDA will do with a peanut processing plant in Portales. Federal investigators say Sunland Inc. knew that some of its peanut butter was tainted with salmonella, but sent that out anyway. The FDA says Sunland's internal test found salmonella in the plant, and the FDA says its own test found 28 different samples of salmonella there, and it says the plant was not clean, with some peanuts being exposed to rain and birds. A woman accused of killing her husband, a local Air Force major, is set to be back in court today. An arraignment is set for Amy Herrera this morning. Investigators say she shot her husband, Mark, back in July. Now, she claims they were in their house, he was drunk, and that he made her pull the trigger. Herrera is charged with murder. A motorcycle rider who led deputies on a high-speed chase is expected to face a judge today. Deputies say Anthony Milligan was on a motorcycle on the Big Eye, speeding, going at times up to 100 miles per hour. This happened on Wednesday. One deputy was trying to pull him over. Well, investigators say Milligan crashed when he got off of the freeway, off of Manal, and took off running. Investigators found him hiding under the school bus nearby. They say the bike was stolen. New Mexico's state lottery scholarship program is not hitting the jackpot these days. In fact, it's getting close to the red. So now two UNM students, Jake Wellman and Caroline Marie Muriata, are bringing students, parents, and state legislators together for a summit later this month to figure out how to keep the lottery scholarships coming. Ticket sales from the lotto are down more than $16 million in the last six years, while the number of students getting the scholarships is going up. My brother's a junior in high school right now, and I think he'll be, his group of um, students who are looking to graduate and trying to plan out where they're going to college are going to face a big uncertainty. And they won't be sure, you know, if their college will be funded, if they'll have to take out loans, if they'll be able to justify the loans that are required to go to an in-state college. So at the summit, the group plans to look at seeing if the scholarship should be based on how much money students need to go to college, not just how well they did in school, and also making students get more than a 2.5 GPA to get those scholarships. 535 is now the time we are stepping into the season of giving and if you've ever thought of wanting to help those who are struggling now is the time because many families in our community are struggling to even have a Thanksgiving dinner. Yes now our friends at 94 Rock are once again trying to stuff a big semi truck full of food for something we love. It's called Thanksgiving on the Mayflower. They're at the Albertsons on San Mateo and Montgomery with our David Romero right now. David let's take it that truck is empty. They got a long way to go. 
It's just the beginning, Matt, and of course they have a lot of boxes to fill, and, and it would be so ideal if they could fill this truck and bring another one out here. And to talk a little bit about that is the Promotions Director for Clear Channel Communications here in Albuquerque. This is Ryan Safford. Uh, Ryan, talk to me a little bit about uh, how important it is to come out here and, and give to this. Well, the storehouse is, I found out yesterday, has over 90,000 people that they help in New Mexico, and we, we this gets them through the holidays and gets them well, we'll get them well into 2013, and we did 100,000 pounds last year. We want to do... 200. We're doubling. We did three days last year. We're doing six days this year, and we want to double that to 200,000 pounds of food. And of course, it's not just canned food donations. It's also money donations, right? Absolutely. Every dollar uh, equates to uh, five pounds of food. So, I mean, the money goes really well as well. And uh, talk about you guys and your part out here. Uh, what, what's it like for the crew to be part of this? Uh, you know, they get, we like to hang out in parking lots. It's a lot of fun for us. And, uh, no, these guys have gr are great. They're here uh, for the next five days, 6 to 6, and then the sixth day on Wednesday, 6 to 10 a.m., uh, hanging out, meeting everybody. And uh, we've got some great festivities planned out here, some bands playing on Saturday. So it's going to be a fun time. A fun time for a good cause. And, of course, these guys are going to be out here all the way until next Wednesday. So do your best to come out here and, and uh, give a little to those who need it most now during the holiday season. Matt, back to you. All right, David, great way to help. Great chance to go meet the guys from 94 Rock. And if you can't make it out to the Mayflower, another way to help is to leave non-perishable food by your mailbox tomorrow. Your letter carrier will pick that up and then get it to charity.